I just wanted to start out by asking you a little bit about your work um, in sanitation in the developing world. Obviously, it's a critical challenge, really important to achieving various health goals. And so tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing to try to address that issue. So I joined American Standard two and a half years ago. And frankly, I was shocked to learn that every day, 2,000 kids die for lack of access to safe sanitation. And we joined a conversation that Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation were having about reinventing the toilet. So I sent a handful of engineers to Bangladesh to see if we could help solve the problem. And lo and behold, after 2,000 years of working on sanitation, we actually discovered a simple little solution, which is a trapway system, we call it Sato for safe toilet, that goes on to open pit latrines to keep the insects from flying in and out. So two years ago, we made a commitment to touch two, two million people's lives. And last year at the Clinton Global Initiative, we extended that to reach 5.5 million people's lives by the year 2017. Now, I have to tell you, we borrowed a page out of Tom Shoe's playbook. So for every champion toilet that we sell, we donate one of these safety pans for use in a developing country. So, so far, we've donated 400,000 units. So we've touched two million people's lives, at least two million people's lives already. We think it's possible, actually, to touch 20 million people's lives by the year 2020. And, and how do you get there? I'm wondering if you're also looking at, you know, models to sell them into these markets and looking at how to price them so that they would be affordable? So, you know, that's a great question. We started the journey by saying we wanted to, we wanted to donate. We wanted to ask our consumers in North America. What we quickly found out was the key for success is to create sustainable business models. So we can use our engineering intelligence to invent solutions but we really need local entrepreneurs to help us create sustainable businesses and that is in fact how we'll get to 20 million people by 2020. We started in Bangladesh we've had our engineers over the past year into sub-saharan Africa to invent a different solution for that but we're getting ready to make a move into India where there are still 620 million people that have open field defecation so we think that is a real opportunity. And, and, and how is that business model coming along? So far you've primarily donated, so, so how, does, how, how do you envision that working? So in Bangladesh, we have a local company, it's called RFL, who actually manufactures the pans that we donate, but they also take it to market. So they have a real business model, so they're selling pans, they have an advertising campaign on air about these safety pans. So it's slow. I think we've made a whopping $1,000 so far, so I'm still in, you know, in deficit. But I believe that we can create a real, a real viable model. And so we're using that as a test case then to expand that. I'm optimistic that we can engage with the Indian government as we start to attack India on how do we create these business models for India. You know, in, in development, there's been a lot more talk about the role of the private sector. Um, and so I'm curious sort of where you, where you think the sort of the global development community is on that journey. And do you feel like you're a truly um, engaged partner in, in setting some of these goals and addressing some of these challenges? I think more than ever, there's a symbiotic relationship between the private and the public sectors. Certainly you see that coming true at the Clinton Global Initiative. I know that with our relationships, both with government agencies as well as NGOs they've accelerated and frankly challenged us to the next level so I really see it working I'm really encouraged and I'm also encouraged that there's not the big bad business you know attitude for people at, at the conference